Intellectual property is one of the most ancient form of property rights exercised by humans. Almost as ancient as human existence itself. The law of course came much later. Specifically you could say the late 1400s onwards is where you find intellectual property law being started, being found, being applied. As far as India is concerned, we would say roughly 1950s onwards is where we find application of intellectual property in Indian context. Thereon things have proceeded. Initially Indian focus was more on trademarks and copyrights. Then through the ages it has developed further. Trademark and copyright of course they are important and they continue to remain important. But patents, geographical indications, seed protection, other uh, forms of intellectual property have also become considerably important. We could say intellectual property is actually a developing field. It has been developing and is continuously developing. More and more type of rights are being protected and more and more statutory rights are being accorded by the various governments throughout the world, including India. Can you tell us in today's context, so much of innovation is taking place. How can one protect its intellectual property and its trademarks? And can you tell us how the branding is done exactly by through the trademark registration and all? Each type of intellectual property is unique in itself and each requires a separate form of protection. Patents require a protection which is entirely different from copyright and similarly copyright requires a protection which is entirely different from trademarks. Now for trademarks, you have to specifically focus on certain aspects. Branding as you said is one of the major features and very important to all types of enterprises, all types of companies. But it doesn't simply start from writing a simple application or registering a form with a trademark authority. It starts much before that. First, you have to think about what your particular brand is going to be. It has to conform to what you intend to do with your company, what you intend to do with your particular enterprise. And accordingly, and it's not simply a business decision, but an artistic decision as well, because you will want to build on that brand eventually. It is not something which would be for, let's say, one year or two years. It is something which you would want to continue, a legacy that will continue much after even you are not present. So therefore, it requires considerable and in-depth thought, not something which is momentary, not something which is only for the immediate purpose that I require a name for my enterprise. So I will simply get, I will opt for this particular name and put it. It is not something like that. Additionally, once you have finally figured and focused on a particular name, then you have to proceed beyond that. You have to see, is that name in any way conflicting with something which is already existing? You cannot have something which is in conflict with another name. Then the uniqueness of your brand is entirely lost. What you were aiming to generate, a goodwill, a legacy would be lost. So you have to check in your, with your peers whether a similar name exists, whether a similar brand exists, whether a similar logo exists. You also have to check in history whether there is something which could be in any way casting positive or negative aspects on your particular brand. Similarly, you have to look towards the future and thereupon you have to decide upon a name. Once you have decided upon a name, even then everything is not finalized for you because then you have to decide whether you can under law and here I am focusing specifically on Indian law under Indian law, you can get that particular name. That requires certain aspects to be looked into. Similarly, 
you have to check with the trademark authorities that particular name is not already there on record for something else and accordingly proceed and thereupon certain forms are filed certain declarations are made and accordingly you get a registration how long it takes to get your name registered see first we need to consider the fact that registration by itself is not mandatory under trademark law it is optional even if i have not registered a mark it can still be the mark of my trade trade mark and i can use it and i would also have protection under the law as regards that common law mark which is referred to as an unregistered trade trademark there would be protection for that as well but the problems that we face with an unregistered trademark are more than those that are brought about by registering a trademark a registered trademark brings security brings affirmation that this particular mark specifically belongs to you an unregistered trademark requires you to prove if challenged that that mark belongs to you so therefore it is always preferable that you get a registered uh, get your mark registered of course even an unregistered trademark you still have protection for that but still preferable that you get your mark registered currently the uh, the the timeline that is adhered to under indian law roughly application by itself takes a minimal of time but once we even have e filing now but once e filing or physical filing has been done getting the trademark takes it can take anywhere between 8 months to more than 2 years and this is because of the procedure involved once you have made an application that application is analyzed by the trademark office by the authorities in the trademark office they check the application for various formal and legal uh, prior uh, legal aspects whether it conforms to those or whether it does not and accordingly they may issue an examination report which cites objections these objections could vary from something as simple as sufficient fee not being paid to something more complex as an a mark already existing on record or a mark not being allowed for being scandalous to the general public it could be anything in this manner accordingly you have to reply to that examination report now when you make a reply to that examination report it would be analyzed and things may come to such an extent that you would have to go to the trademark office for a hearing before the patent uh, before the trademark examiner now during that hearing you have to justify as to why this particular trademark should be granted to you the this entire set of proceedings can be carried out either by the applicant himself or through an advocate or a trademark agent it is always preferable that it is done through an advocate because that advocate would be well aware of the laws that exist of the loopholes of the issues that can arise of all of uh, every aspect and accordingly assist you in an appropriate manner can you tell us uh, what if you have not registered the trademark and the mark gets so famous and then how can you prove that this was your mark and for example there are so many mithai shops open in the name of personal name so others also have similar names so if they go about making the same uh, shops same product and having the same name which is mostly a common name so how do you in that case what can you do if a mark has not been registered then you have to largely rely on evidence to prove that you have protection in that particular mark now that evidence could be something as simple as um a witness coming forth and saying i am aware that this particular mark existed that this particular mark was used by this person from such and such year or your receipts of your business 
or invoices of your business or balance sheets, audit sheets and in today's times uh, websites as well. Um, if it's a food shop as you were saying registrations with the Zomato and other, um, other um, cash and carry and other uh, websites all of these are evidence that you have been in the trade and you have been carrying on this trade since a particular time and since uh, we, we were with the sweetmeat shops you, uh, you may have been aware a couple of years ago there was this incident of uh, Ghantewala of Chandni Chowk uh, which shut shop and at that time his was an unregistered trademark but he offered it he said if anybody else is willing to carry on this legacy they are free I will assign this particular mark to them and they will be uh, able to carry on this legacy and see uh, and this is where the importance of trademarks comes into place you can actually assign a trademark separate from your business the mark is the Ghantewala mark which is entirely separate from the shop he could sell the shop differently and he can assign the mark separately it need not go to uh, the same uh, person so this is where the importance of trademark lies today i may own a trademark which i with which i am operating in let's say delhi or a few other states tomorrow i may wish to uh, to assign it to another person who may wish who may or may not want to uh, use it in delhi of course a trademark is applicable to the entire country so that, that is not an issue but he may want to set up shop in another area in another part of the country so that is something which is very interesting I may sell my or rent my shop to part, party A but I may assign my trademark to party B but is it like something like franchisee it is in a way actually like franchisee and here I would again give you an example of a famous franchisee like your McDonald's which owns the trademark which also sets the standards that these are the standards you have to adhere to in setting up your shop but at the end of the day whoever is the director on the board is not coming to India and selling the burgers it's somebody who is sitting in US it is but he at the same time is exercising control he has given you a license and this is where we have a difference between a license and an assignment license is where I retain control on how the trademark is going to be used on how it will be applied on what will be done what will be sold under uh, the, that particular trademark assignment is permanent it is once I have sold that particular mark to you, it belongs to you to do as you please. While license can be revoked, assignment is permanent. Once assigned, it belongs entirely to you. License, I have an option. I may do whatever I like. I may even revoke it. I may have an agreement at the start itself which would say I am giving you this particular license for only five years or during the subsistence of the agreement I may say now I am terminating this license so that is the difference between license and assignment and what does franchisee have is it both uh, is it the license and also the or it's a sort of a trademark is transferred or what is in case of a franchisee a trademark is not transferred it is a license under a in-depth franchisee agreement in which various points are laid down such as you have to adhere to certain standards as far as the products that are being sold you have to adhere to the a particular layout you have to maintain certain cleanliness standards certain staff protocol all of these aspects are laid down in franchise uh, a franchise agreement also as part of this is an intellectual property clause which says a license is being made out to you to use this particular trademark in context of these particular aspects for the subsistence of this particular agreement. If there is no permanent transfer here, it is a license. How can you calculate the value of your brand? Is there any, there is any formula to make your brand calculation or what? 
there are several formulas actually in existence which are prescribed to calculate the value of your brand but all of these formulas at the end of the day give you only rough estimates they do not give you any specific figure because for the simple reason how do you specify what is the quality of your mark what is the standing of your industry uh, of your uh, mark in the industry is a very difficult question to answer it may vary it is it it may have a certain standard today it may not have that same standard tomorrow although economists statisticians have laid down varied formulas but still they give a rough estimate only they cannot they are not able to give you a specific figure for your mark it is always a rough estimate so does the only the registered mark get you value or the unregistered mark also like you said about ghante wala yes so um, actually both unregistered as well as registered marks have almost equal value however for a registered mark the complications in transferring the mark are and, and here the legal complications are much less than those in context of an unregistered trademark for a for for a registered trademark it is simply an assignment that has to be made which has to be registered with the trademark office and therefore things are much more easier legally speaking for an unregistered trademark you may enter into a person to person agreement but that will not vest in you the rights permanent rights to that particular mark it may happen that another person may come forward and try to lay claim to that particular unregistered trademark so, so from the market perspective the value of the mark may be different uh, maybe uh, would be the same but legally speaking the value of a registered trademark is much more than that of an unregistered trademark can you elaborate on how many types of trademarks are there the types of trademarks that are usually recognized are uh, are divided into uh, figurative into this uh, and um, olfactory audio and by audio i mean um, it, well in india's conte- uh, india's context the yahoo yodel of uh, yahoo.com website was the first um uh, audio uh, trademark to be registered so uh, or in um, then you you may be aware of various uh, ringtones mm-hmm. of various mobile phones they are also uh, trademarks they are also trademarks yes they they are copyrighted as well as trademarked both yes and how how can you have both in certain situations mm-hmm. you can actually have both a copyright as well as a trademark this of course depends upon for example if it's an audio mark then you can apply for a copyright for that audio tune and because it is a mark of your trade that is a tune which is unique to your trade which is which symbolizes your mobile phone so therefore you can also have it as a trademark but of course this is not applicable to all types of tunes or any other uh, audio sounds that are copyrighted it is only when they also conform to the laws as laid down under trademark dr vikram please tell us can a mark lose its protection like Or, I, like yeah. i said a trademark is a mark of trade therefore it is very important for the owner of the trademark to constantly emphasize that i own this particular mark and constantly reinforce in the community in the public that i am the owner of this particular mark so when you stop doing that or when you allow anybody else to appropriate the goodwill that has been generated by you at that time you start losing protection of your particular trademark i'll give you a small example um, you may have uh, you may be eating a mari biscuit now mari by itself at one time used to be a trademark but due to several developments it became a generic word now that word mari is used by several brands as a mark as a particular form of biscuit but it is not used as a trademark 
it is combined with another particular uh, another uh, brand and used as a brand another example that you often come across is the xerox example now xerox is actually the name of the photocopier producing uh, industry the 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 company that produces those photocopying machines and xerox is not a verb you come across shops which say this is a xerox shop you also use it in a manner that i am going to get these documents xerox this is not the right manner of usage now in xerox's case xerox actually sent notices and informed the public at large that we are the owner of this particular trademark and this particular trademark is not a generic work and that is how they prevented that particular mark from being lost as a generic trademark and that is the distinction you have to constantly keep on reinforcing in the public that you are the owner of that particular mark so you mean that anywhere if it's written is a rox and there's no xerox machine in that shop it can be challenged it certainly can be challenged because you are diluting a mark which is a trademark of a particular company so if a mark is copied then how can you what is the recourse to you if it's in copied in a deceptive manner like not exactly but it's an intention to copy that mark like coca cola is written in a manner so how will you go about doing that there are two options if you come across either a direct copying or a deceptive copying of your trademark one is filing a suit for infringement and second is for filing a suit of passing off usually we file a joint suit which is called a suit for in, uh, for uh, infringement and passing off now infringement relates to copying of your registered trademark either directly and in toto or where there is deceptive similarity passing off is actually a common law remedy it relates to something that i am passing off my goods as his so what it means is that a third person uses your mark either directly or in deceptive similarity and starts passing off his or her goods as those belonging to you so that is the distinction this is a common law remedy so even if your mark is not registered you can still go to court and file for a passing off suit so is there any monetary you can claim monetary damages from certainly the certainly both civil as well as criminal remedies are available under the trademark law and depending upon your losses monetary claims can be laid as well thank you mr bigran for giving us such important information